And we bless you. Thank you, y'all. Praise y'all. Yeah. All right. If we would, um, my lovely Isha, open us up in a word of prayer. And we get into our lesson. Praise uh, way. Father, we just come before you in your precious name, Yahweh. We just thank you for last night's slumber, this morning's rise, Father. We thank you for keeping us, Father. We thank you that, as you said in your word, that if we keep our eyes on you, you would keep us in perfect peace, Father. So we thank you for perfect peace. We thank you for shalom, nothing broken, nothing missing, and nothing lacking, Father. We thank you for this time of fellowship, this fourth day of consecutive for us. Hallelujah. Just spending time in your word, Father. We thank you that more days of this week were spent with you um, as a fellowship, as a ministry, Father. Um, this week, Father, we just thank you for one another. We thank you for the person who's on the conference call, those who may be watching um, live by um, via internet, Father. We just pray that you would continue to bless our more that he would um, continue to um, read and and to discover your word even the more yes. as we know that it is always it's pregnant it's always birthing birthing new life father to us and we thank you for um our servant leader obadiah father for his contribution and his time of teaching when he teaches father and the, the words that you place him to read in the scriptures father so that we can um be uh, doers, not only hearers of the word, Father. Yes. We pray yeah. even for Mariah right now, Father. We pray that her spirit will be be open and humble to her Abba's teaching, that she would want to hear a word yes. and to um, to fall in love with you, y'all, even at the tender age of 19 months, Father. Yes. We continue to pray for those who um, would want to be here but couldn't make it for whatever reason. Yes. We pray for those, Father, that have... Um, gone a different way, Father, praying that as long as they're not, if they're no longer connected to us, Father, let, they, let them still be connected to you, oh yeah. Yes. And we pray, Father, in your perfect will, as we go throughout this day of your Sabbath, as we rest in you, as we trust in you, as we lean on you, as we look to you for everything. It's in Yahweh's name, through your sure strength, we do pray and praise. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Hallelujah. Yahweh. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we want to welcome those who are online as well as those who are with us uh, uh, on the conference calls, those who are alive, those who still might be yet on their way. Hallelujah. Be it on the line or whichever way. We pray that uh, today's lesson will be a blessing to you. We're continuing in our series on Torah, Law and Order, and why Torah is relevant today. And I want to talk to this morning um, about uh, benefits of Torah. What are the qualifications for benefits for Torah? And our teaching will be found in Tehillim 103. Tehillim 103. Psalms 103. So I left will begin. Hallelujah. Those of you who uh, missed the, missed the uh, call last night, uh, you missed a very powerful teaching last night. Uh, that teaching will probably be up on the line sometime today about uh, forgiveness and atonement as we are working our way towards Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement and uh, forgiveness and um, understanding the, the things that um, we uh, need to do uh, in order to receive forgiveness. In order to receive, you got to give it. Um, this, this, this relationship that we're involved in is a reciprocal relationship. Reciprocal meaning is a give and take relationship. And you have to to give some things. It's just not about take, take, take. It's about give and take. Um, God gives unto us because we are his mishpah. We are his family. And in Tehillim 103, we'll see today, this morning, uh, a couple of things in understanding um, Torah and its relevance. One, 
who and what Yah is, okay, two, we'll look at his mercy and his favor. We'll look at his sovereign, we'll look at his loving and eternal faithfulness to us, we'll look at his, his sovereignty, all right, and, um, and understanding these things and why Torah uh, is important and how Torah uh, plays into all of these things. All right? Verse 1. Hallelujah. It says, Bless Yahweh, O my being, and all that is within me. Bless his set apart name. One of the things we have to understand is that Yah is worthy of of our blessing, he is worthy of of being blessed. His name is worthy of being blessed. All right. Um, it is Yah who is Elohim. It is Yah who created us. It is Yah who has been merciful and favorable to us. It is Yah who has who has created us and not us him. It is Yah who. Is, is the one who um, has thought all of this to give us, as we're going to talk about this afternoon, to prepare everything that we needed before we even got here. And all we had to do was just walk in his blessings and in his faith. That's all that we had to do, is to walk in his blessings and in his faith. And in, 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 in fellowship with him. But that was too hard. So what we decided to do was to be rebellious, cantankerous, stiff-necked, and hard-headed. And so now it brings in the lack of his favor, the lack of his provision, the lack of his protection. All right? Let us look at this, this one in verse 1. Who is to be blessed, whose name is to be to be blessed. Alright? What are his attributes? What is his qualities? What is his qualities? Alright? In verse 6 it says that he is righteous and right rulings for all the oppressed. Now that's good news to let us know. And a lot of us have this misconception about this relationship um, and in fact we talked about that last night I believe it was in Tehillim 60 where it talked about um, the hardships that we would have um, not because y'all want us to have a hard life but because of our rebellion and our disobedience and because we refuse to do what Torah says we make this relationship hard we make our life hard all right. In fact, it says um, because of our rebellion, right? Uh, in Tehillim 60, it says, "Oh Elohim, you have rejected us, and you have broken us. You have been displeased and turned back, turned back to us. Uh, you have made the earth temple, and you have broken it. All right. Uh, heal it, heal its breaches, for it is shaken." You have let your people see hardship. All right, verse 3, hardship. All right, so in this hardship, now it gives uh, Yah an opportunity to show his right rulings, to show his righteousness to those who are oppressed. If we had all the strength that we needed to do each and everything that we needed to do, then our minds would put us in a place in a position of why do we need Yah? What is the purpose of needing Yah? If we could do all the things that we need to do by ourselves. Alright? So, let's not get confused and let's not get confused about this. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright. He is righteous and he is just. He revealed his character to Moshe 
and his deeds to the people of Israel. He allowed us to see who exactly who he is and what he is capable of. He allowed himself to be revealed. He showed himself naked unto us in his full righteousness, his full right ruling. All right? He showed he was merciful and gracious. All right? Verse 8. He says, Yahweh is compassionate and showing favor. Okay? Patient and great in kindness. Verse 9. He does not always strive nor maintain it forever. Why? Because Yahweh is trying to reveal himself unto his people. His purpose is to reveal himself unto people. But here's the thing. I'm not going to continue to go back and forth with you. I'm not going to, this, this, listen, we're not going to go back and forth about this thing. I'm not always going to strive with you, nor am I going to maintain it forever. But I, I want you to get what I'm trying to teach you. I want you to understand the things that I'm trying to say to you so that you would be able to, to walk in these blessings. Alright? Verse 2. Bless Yahweh, O my being, and do not forget all his dealings. Or or the the uh, in the King James I, I think I believe it says all his benefits. There are benefits in this relationship. But and we were talking about this earlier this morning that granted everybody likes to cling to the promises but nobody wants to to uh, put the conditions in order to get the promises nobody wants to do that right that word is gahem gahoal gahem gahem dealings recompense benefits okay so it can be it can be dealings or benefits all right, either way it goes, okay? So, he said, let us not forget all of his dealings, all right, or his benefits, okay? Who does what? What does he do, okay? Who forgives all your crookedness, who deals, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with kindness and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with tub. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. These are the benefits that are encompassed in this relationship. And all of them surround or all of them go through or pass through the, the confines of this relationship which is Torah. Alright? It is Torah, hallelujah, that, that gives us the entranceway into these benefits. Okay? It, it, is the, it is the, if you could, the manual, the benefits manual. Alright? It is the conditions that are, are, are that provocate the, the, the benefits. Alright? It is the, the, the key that unlocks the benefits. So if we do not keep Torah, we do not have access to the benefits. Mm -hmm. All right? So Torah is key to accessing the benefits. For if you do not keep the Torah, then you cannot, um, you cannot have benefits. All right, it is, it is it is that which 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 gives which gives you uh, the access to the benefits. Okay, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So we looked at his attributes, and we can see even more of his attributes here in verses three, four, and five. His righteousness, his his forgiveness, his redemption power. Um, his healing from diseases, uh, his compassion, him crowning you with kindness, um, 
desire, satisfying your desires, okay, renewing your youth. All of these are pertinent benefits that we should be looking forward to, okay? It's important and imperative. These benefits are pertinent because of our need for the benefit, all right? In this wicked world, and as this world is today, uh, there are some things that we need. Uh, it, 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 I mean, as wicked as this world is, come on. We need his protection. We need his love. We need all the things um, that, that Yah is offering unto us in this, this 103rd uh, chapter or division of Tehillim. Okay? We need these things. Alright? He made himself known uh, or made known his ways to Moshe, his acts to the children of Israel. Yahweh is compassionate and shown favor. And if we are his children and we're made in his likeness and his image, should not, should not we be doing the same? Alright? Yah is compassionate and showing favor. He's patient, great in kindness. Alright? And as we said before, verse 9, he does not always strive, nor maintain it forever. Okay? He does, he has not done to us according to our sins. Alright? This is the key thing. The, the penalty for, or the wages of sin is what? Death. Yeah. Alright? So Yah has not given us according to our sins. Yah has been compassionate to us. Yah has shown us mercy. Yah has shown us favor. Yah has did these things so that we would be able to, to walk in the benefits of Torah. What is the sense of having all these benefits and we don't use them? Um, I got a, a text this, this week from, from Brother Wadiah talking about, uh, I'm sorry, my employer said, my boss said that I can't work today. No, I said that he strongly urges that I don't work, that I don't work today. Strongly urges that I don't work today. And so when you got benefits, when your boss gives you benefits and you don't avail yourself of those benefits, those are wasted benefits. You think the enemy, I mean, you think the, uh, the, the your employers want to continue to give you those benefits? Uh, I don't think so. Um, Hallelujah. Um, Not going to waste them benefits on you for nothing. All right? So he has not rewarded us according to our crookedness. Right? Yes. Now, you glanced over one key crucial word in the way it's spelled. And maybe I'll bring that out. <clears throat> crookedness and crookednesses. Crookednesses is a multitude of sins that you have done. Crookedness, we'll okay. just speak on maybe one. Let's see. Okay. And the English, it does definitely, definitely uh, comes out differently. Um, actually, it could be rendered. Hmm. That's interesting. Of course, it, certain, 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 certain circumstances it, 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 in Scripture, all throughout the Scriptures, it'll say crookedness. And then to give an emphasis, it'll say crookedness says. Right. Um, According to, and just going into Strong's, um, that word, I mean, I think that the author of this particular translation used it to, to make that distinction. Um, 
but according to the Strong's, it's the actual word should be iniquities. Um, which is yeah, why yeah, yeah, iniquities. That's what you get in the King James iniquities. Right, which is rendered more perfect, yeah. as it is the Hebrew word avon, mm -hmm. which is perversity, depravity, iniquity, guilt, or punishment of iniquity. Uh, iniquity, guilt of iniquity, guilt as great, mm -hmm. or guilt of condition, consequence or punishment for iniquity. Um, uh, and, that's, and that's one of the things, I mean, granted, I don't care what version you use, mm -hmm. you know, it's why it's important and imperative for us to get back to what was originally said. Mm -hmm. You know, what was Yah's original intent? If that particular word crookedness, crooked, crooked, crookednesses, um, brings developments or the intention of the thought of what Yah was saying, then so be it. But uh, what was originally intended um, was the perversity, or the depravity, or the iniquity, or the guilt of punishment, or iniquity, um, whatever it is that cuts. Mm -hmm. You know, so we understand that what what was done and what was said, well actually what was done, what was done, he has not dealt according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our crookednesses. So, uh, and that's one of the things, and we have to understand, um, I actually did a lesson, I think it was before you got here, um, where we taught on the... There's, I think, 12, mm -hmm. 12 different words for sin. Mm -hmm. um, just like, um, all right, you have in the first part, it's not dealt with us according to our sins, which is shed, sin, sin, guilt for sin, or punishment for sin. Mm -hmm. Then you have the other word, which is avon. Those are just two of the 12 words in the Hebrew that deal with sin. And then the definitions, uh, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine definitions for the one, Avon and Chet, um, is three different definitions. So you had 12 definitions just between those two words. Right. Okay. So there is a, def there's a, a distinction in there. And I think the way that the author rendered it in the scripture, um, could be a little questionable, and even with the Strong's, the Strong's is geared from a Christian perspective. Mm -hmm. So we still even yet have to be careful with that, um, and and some of its reference. Um, but uh, yes, definitely a definite definite distinction between. He wants you to know this is uh, a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. All right, so praise God. There you go. All right. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy, his goodness, his kindness, or his faithfulness, all right, uh, toward them that fear him. And the key is, is the fear. Um, I had someone call me yesterday, and they were asking me, did I know Reverend so-and-so? And I said, no, I don't know Reverend so-and-so. Um, um, we don't believe in that. Uh, the only one who is worthy of reverence is Yah. And that it says it right there, toward them that fear him, and that's the Hebrew word Yah, Yahweh, Yahweh, uh, meaning fearing, reverent, afraid. Okay, and because we fear Yah, we ought to, we just ought to reverence Yah. We ought to be afraid of Yah. Um, or fear and stand in awe of Yah. All right. As far as the east is from the west, so far have He removed our transgressions from us. And and once again in verse twelve, He uh, He removes His He removes our sins, or our transgressions from us. Uh, transgressions. Pisha. Transgression, rebellion, transgression against individuals, transgressions, nation against nation, transgression against Yah, 
transgressions in general, as recognized by sinners, as Yah deals with it, as Yah forgives, guilty of transgression, punishment for transgression, or offering for transgression. All right? So, we find once again here another word in the Hebrew uh, for sin, transgression, rebellion. Okay? So he removes these transgressions from us. What does he base it on? Once, we, once again, we look at and we see re, um, relationship. Verse 13. Like a father pity of his children, so Yah pity of them that what? Yah, that fear him. Yahweh, who fear him. Alright? For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are thus. Okay? So Yah remembers that we are but sin. Okay? So what does he do? He shows us two things. Right? He shows us his actions or his sovereignty and he forgives sin. He lets us know, I am your Abba. Verse 13, I pity for my children. Alright? I pity for them to fear me. So question. Going back to our lesson last night, if Yah if Yah pity of them that fear him, if we don't fear him, would that condition us not to be forgiven? Or would that place us in a position not to be forgiven? If Yah pity of them that fear him, and if a person does not fear him, would that place us in a position not to be forgiven? Pretty much. Absolutely. Until you turn around and start fearing. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, the code. that's the whole key right there, is to feeling him. You cannot feel him now, but circumstances will arise when you should fear him. fear him. And that's when he can have pity on you and compassion. But you, but you need to have that fear of Yah. Should the fear of Yah be based upon a situation? Say what now? Should the fear of Yah be based upon a situation? No, it shouldn't be, but it is. And Yah knows that we, uh, yeah, and, and you just read it, Yah knows that we are but dust. Right. So he knows it's going to come a time, that situation, where you're going to have to fear him. You're going to have a choice. Either you're going to fear him or you're going to burn him. At that particular time. Because yeah, I know you have been in that situation, and I have been in it. And, and, and we didn't fear him before that. But when the situation arose, we fear him. And for those of us that had enough sense, we continue to fear him at that situation. Some people fear him at for the moment, and then they'll go right back to not fearing him again. I don't play uh, Obadiah advocate this morning. <clears throat> so, so if I get in that position, I fear him for a moment, then I go back to my mess. Then, then, then. What is it? How does where, where does that place me? Does that place me? Am I truly forgiven? For the moment. For the moment. Okay. It, it, it's but not, because I, I really don't fear him, then I, I, I'm going back into my mess. Yeah. You only fear you only fear him because of what's going on. And once again, you have we have to you read the emphasis of that scripture where it says. He knows that we are but dust. That's why he puts all this stuff in implementation. But the whole key to it, and I don't want to go further along in your no lesson or whatever, but the whole, the bottom line is that everything we do has to be done because there is a judgment. Right. There's a judgment, and ultimately, we, we talked about that Yatram, meaning that there the, is the, it's the sound of the trumpet to let us know that the, the end is near, the judgment is coming 10 days before the judgment uh, or the atonement uh, uh, um, and then Yah does the end gathering during the, the, the period of Sukkot. Um, so in essence, I think what I hear you saying mm -hmm. is that it behooves us mm -hmm. 
yeah. to fear him. Yeah, it, it just does. Because okay. if you're not saying it, because let's look to longer picture. The scripture tells us that don't worry about tomorrow because today has enough problems of its own. But if you get to tomorrow and there continues to be a tomorrow in the life, when all of this is gone, it's going to be a judgment. You have to be on the right side of that judgment. You have to be sitting at the right hand when judgment comes. You don't want to be on the other side. So it just behooves us to continue to fear him after how the situation comes. That's what I did. I didn't fear him, but when my situation arose, I got the fear of Yah and I continued to fear Yah. So I would not turn back to my to have another situation. It just it just makes good sense. And it's not good to continue to have to, to have, continue to have that because we this scripture we read and saying he has compassion on you. What we read last night. It, and um um oh wow 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 the, the, the 35th verse we was reading uh, it's in my notes. Uh, it's First Kings chapter eight. First Kings yeah, chapter eight thirty five. It told us for those when you pray for those that once again it going into the field of God and for what those that repent and turn back to Him, then He'll hear your prayers. But if you don't do any of those things, He don't hear your prayers. You know, it'd be like I hear some noise, but I don't know what it is. Right. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's nobody that's turned back around me, so they can't be talking to me. Right. You know, it, 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 it just goes down. Everything with this lesson is, is about. You have to have a healthy fear of Yah. So that fear encompasses <clears throat> not only reverence in Him, but obedience to His Torah. There you go, there you and go. obedience to the things that He tells there you to do. You go, there you go. You have to the promises as well as the conditions. There you go, there you go. Before, or not before, but because if we don't keep the conditions... We really can't ascertain the promise. Yeah, you get some favor, but I don't know how long favor was. Well, favor is based upon credit. Yeah, how much credit you got, though? I mean, I, I, now, if you're over your credit limit, then, you, then you, you're, there's no more favor that pertains to you. In fact, if you go into IBM chapter 10, verse 26, it yeah, says if you continue to see willfully sin, they said there no longer remains a sacrifice for you. There's, You ain't got no credit. There's no favor for you. So that answers the question you just asked me. So if you fear him and then you don't fear him, fear for the moment, then don't fear him. You have you know, to just, 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 just for the situation. Well, you just answered it right there. Okay, well, I just want to make sure that we clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> just answer it right there. Oh, you, know, you, you can go back and forth all you want, you know what I mean? But do you have... The healthy, you have to have a healthy, healthy fear, fear of God. Of, yeah. And that comes with the obedience, taking on the conditions so you can get the benefits. You know, you have to reverence Him. You have to be, uh, you have to be every day. This has to be an everyday thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, wow. Boy, I, I guess that's... Moment by the, moment. I guess I stepped all of your lesson with all the questions and stuff. Wow. Man. Well, you know, I mean, sometimes that's what you do. So, you know, I mean, that's okay. As long as the point, and, 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 and as Obadiah's advocate, um, you know, we want to make sure that people clearly understand what's being said. Because, <laughs> because a lot of people want to pick and choose out of that what they want. I remember a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, um, you know, he, he um, gave me the scripture. And he said, quote, unquote, God will give you the desires of your heart. And I said, wow, well, look at this shopping cart Christian. That's all he picked out was the desires of your heart. But what is the condition of that particular text? Is that if you delight yourself in him, then he'll, in Yahweh, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Then if you're delighting yourself in him, then your desires will now become Yah's desires. Just as it is, is outlined out here in, in, in Tehillim 103, that the desires of Yah, or the characteristics, or the attributes, or the qualities of Yah, is he's righteous, he's just, he's merciful, he's, he's favored, he is faithful, eternally, he's lovingly committed, he's sovereign, he forgives us, he heals us, he protects us. He satisfies our desires. In fact, I think we read that a couple verses up. All right? 
satisfies your desire with the good. Five. The youth is renewed like the eagle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Verse 5. Alright, so you know, he satisfies you. Yeah. He gives you the desires. In fact, it's dangerous sometimes for him to satisfy your desires because if we remember, we talked about uh, when the children were still in in, in, yeah, in the wilderness, food still, yeah, the food was still in their mouth. Yeah. They tried, yeah. And that's why, because the eyes of man are never satisfied. They continuously want, want, want. They want more. This isn't good enough for them. They want more and more and more. Instead of being satisfied where they're at, praise Yah, I am where I'm at. Because this is where he had me to be. As long as I'm, I'm where he had me to be, then he can begin to do what he needs to do in me and through me. Then if he wants to elevate me, excuse me, he can elevate me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. All right? So, he conditions it. All right? He conditions it off a relationship. Verse 13. Like, as a father pitieth his children, so Yahweh pitieth them that fear him, that reverence him, that awe, that are in awe of him, that are willing to keep his commandments. You know, I, I, I hear the scripture in the back of my mind. Um, There's a fool said in his heart that there is no Yah. There's a fool that said in his heart, there's a fool that said in his heart, there is no Yah. That's pride. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that too. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's, that's foolishness. All right? Because what is it? Y'all said it's a fool that said in his heart, there is no Yah. All right? So, Yah pitieth them that fear him. Why? For he, he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. He recalled. He called to mind that, yo, there ain't nothing but dust. They dust don't know no better. What dust do? Dust lie around, collect more dust. It blows anywhere. In the wind. Blow anywhere. It gotta be helped. It gotta be cleaned. It, it gotta be money. careful. Pour water. Get money. Yeah. They clean all over you. you know, go any old. It goes anywhere. You track it anywhere. There you go. You blow it anywhere. That's what dust. There you go. And that's what we are. You, know? you blow us anywhere. You um, track us anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You sweep us anywhere. You carry us in. Wow. <laughs> Thus acts any kind of way. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't care where it go. They don't, they don't have no fucking okay. mind. You know. There you go. It doesn't have a direction. It just it just goes where it goes. Yeah. Where it lands and lands. And then it accumulates. Oh. Wow. All right. Verse 15. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. All right? So, if we end up like this dust, we end up like the grass or the flower of the field. All right? The wind pass over it's gone. When we die, there, there's no more remembrance of it. Yeah. All right? But if we are like an oak tree planted by the rivers of water, that when we fade off away, that there's going to be something that somebody is going to remember about us. Why? Because we were in the righteousness of Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We were duplications of our, our body. Someone is going to call to mind. Someone is going to say, hey. It is. You remember Moray. You remember Obadiah. You remember Sister Yacobia. 
You remember Sister Mariah? You remember them? They, man, those were some good people. Mm. Wow, they going to be missed. Now the wicked people. <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking the same. Ain't going to be no remembrance of them. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Okay, so he knows we were, he were, we were, we were, we were like dust. All right, the wind blows over it; it's no more. Places no longer remembers it. But here we go. But the kindness of Yah is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who what fear Him. Us who fear Him are going to be made in the likeness of image of Yah, and we will be remembered. All right? Yeah. And his righteousness is to children's children. See, and you go in and you look at, I think it's in uh, Shemuel chapter 20, uh, where it talks about the sins of the father will, will be passed on to the third and fourth generations. Well, the, the righteousness of those who fear him will be to the children's children. And we are, in essence, what are we doing? We're duplicating light. We're duplicating righteousness. We're duplicating Yah. We're replicating Yah. Hallelujah. That is why we have to forget righteousness. We have to forget more righteousness to more people so that we can replicate or duplicate the kingdom of Yah and those who are willing to accept. Verse 18. To those who guard his covenant. What is his covenant? His Torah. Yeah. Told you. Key to the benefits is to those who guard his covenant. Those who keep his covenant. Those who know what the covenant is. Those who follow the covenant. Those who obey the covenant. They have a key to enter into these benefits. Those who do not guard his covenant. Ah! Different story. Yeah. Those who remember his orders to do them. It is important and imperative that we remember his orders to do them. Do what he commands us to do. Wait a minute. Did, didn't it read uh, to, and to those who remember his request no. to do them? They, don't that say request? Nope. You sure? Don't say suggestions. Well, of course, I know a lot of people that, you know, that, that word says uh, requests and suggestions, did not it? No, sir. It don't say that? No, sir. Oh, it says that. to those who do his orders. Okay, so what's the order? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, in the Hebrew, it is pikhud, 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 p-i-q-q-u-w-d. Pikhud. It means a precept or statute, and in some cases, it's rendered as in I, I think two cases it's rendered as a commandment so if you look back and let's go back over this covenant is Bereth or Bereth Bereth all right covenant allegiance or a pledge between man a treaty alliance a league man to man a constitution, an ordinance, monarch to subjects, agreement, pledge, man to man, alliance, a friendship, alliance, a marriage between Yah and man, alliance, and a friendship, covenant, divine ordinance with signs or pledges. And that word was? This is Bereth. 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 All right, just as the Bereth, um, uh, 
the uh, renewed covenant. Right, renewed covenant. Right. Bear Chef. No, not Bear Chef. Mm -hmm. um, Bear uh, Kadesh. Okay. All right. Gotcha. All right. Uh, okay, so it's an order. Not a order. request. Not a request. Right. A command, a precept, yeah. or a statute. All right. Yeah. To do them. All right. Okay, and it goes on further to clarify, all right, to do them. Yahweh have prepared his throne in the Shemaims and his kingdom ruleth over all, mm. all right, not over some, but over all, okay. Bless Yahweh, you his messengers. Mighty in power, who do his word. All right. So it, it reemphasizes. It even talks to to the messengers or to the Melchim, to the angels, who are mighty in power to do his word. Mm -hmm. Then, if you didn't catch it the first time, he comes back and says, listening to the voice of his word. And this 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 was a conversation that came up, and we need to clarify just just so that everyone understands. People want to try to limit the Torah to the first five books of of the Tanakh. The Torah is not just the first five books of the of the Tanakh. The Torah is His Word. Anything that Yah says, He commands. He gives an ordinance, a precept, a statute, a judgment, a command, a, 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 a ruling. All right. Anything that Yah tells you to do in His Word, it is a command. All right. It is Torah. It's Torah. Period. All right. Okay. Now, last week, or uh, last night, last couple of nights, we talked about the word the bar. Anybody remember what the bar was? The bar was to speak. All right? Mm -hmm. But the bar, the bar also is speech or word or thing or speaking. All right? So, anything that Yah says to us. So if he speaks to us, or he spake to us, we talked about this, he spake to Moshe to speak to the children of Israel. It is a command. It is his word. It is something that he is commanding them to do. Not a request, not a suggestion, not if you think you can do this, if, if you could possibly make time to do this. No, he's not saying that. He's telling us that this is a command. I'm not suggesting that you do this. What I'm telling you is that this is a command. I'm expecting this from you. And if you do not do it, then you have broken my Torah. See, this is the thing we have to understand. That Yah is very serious about his Torah. He is extremely serious about his Torah. Why is he, uh, um, why is he uh, serious about his Torah? Well, his Torah encompasses everything that is included in this relationship that we need to do to please Yah. Yah is setting the parameters of our relationship. It's not based on what we want to do, how we want to have this relationship. Well, I think um, I'll make... Um, I was watching, um, we were watching a movie with my daughter, and the lady was talking about, well, I go to church, on, and I go to church every Sunday. And then, then um, they looked at her, and said, all right, every, every other Sunday. I, I go to church sometime. <laughs> Truth came out. Well, it's not you sitting up and, and saying, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to be on Shabbat. I'll go to Shabbat once a week. That, that should be good enough. Well, Shabbat is once a week. What? <laughs> Once a month. I'll go to Shabbat once a month. No, it's not based upon what you want. And, and and if we go back and we think and we think about some relationship, 
uh, with some sisters or a brother you might have met when you first met them and how you wanted to be with them and, and, and it was just, oh man, I just love this woman and you wanted to be around her all the time. Well, that's the same thing should be with Yah. If we fear him, we love him, we should want to be around him. There should not be anything that would cause us to not want to be around him. That's how important this relationship with Yah should be to us. Okay? Alright, so uh, verse 20, Blessed Yah, bless Yahweh, you his messengers, mighty in power, who do his word, listening to the voice of his word. We should want to do his word. Alright? In his word, his word, his Torah, it is the key to the benefits that are outlined in this chapter. If Yah tells you to do something, we ought to do it. I was watching something, um, Elizabeth, the golden age, the other day. And the queen ordered the people to jump. And they, the people jumped. And so the guy that was with the queen says, wow, they, they jumped. Yes, and it's not a question of me having to tell them how high. They jump high because the queen said to jump. Mm -hmm. We should want to do our best and everything that Yah commands us to do. Now, if there's some things that we are expecting from Yah, then we should also expect them, or He should also expect them from us. We want forgiveness during the Day of Atonement. Yah forgives us, but He bases that upon our relationship with others. Um, I think it was up around 12... Let me find it. Thirteen. All right. So in this relationship, he goes in and he and he tells us very very plainly. He tells us in relationship. He compare. Here you see the physical. The the, the spiritual and physical parallel side by side right there in verse 13 of the Helium 103 you see it side by side like a father pity of his child that is the physical so Yahweh pity of them that fear him the spiritual he gives you a physical to spiritual parallel right there in verse 13 and he deals with it from a relationship standpoint, not from a religious standpoint. Relationship. Something that we, as a natural human being, flesh and blood, could understand. Like a father. Pity of his children. So, yeah. Pity of them that fear him. Alright? So we see this, this physical and spiritual correlation. Okay? 19. Yahweh prepared his throne in the Shemaims, okay, and his kingdom roof over all, not just some, over all, all right? He spoke, the angels, they hearkened unto the voice of Yah, they listened, verse 21, bless ye Yah, all his hosts, ye ministers, of his that do his pleasure. The bottom line is, is this. In order to access these benefits, it's not only just hearing his word, verse 20, but 21, doing his word, doing his pleasure to access the benefits. Bless Yah. All his works. I'm sorry. I, I misread that. Bless Yah. Some of you works. Bless Yah, part of you, his works. No, he said, all his works. So the Torah, once again, though it is given unto Israel, it is to everyone. 
and everyone will be judged by his Torah. And this is what we need to understand. Everybody's going to be judged by his Torah. All right? Hallelujah. He says, not only all his works, in all places of his rule. Well, well, let's, 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 let's not get this confused. Y'all rules in heaven. No. Y'all rules from heaven. All right? He rules all over. In fact, um, the earth is yours, and the fullness that, that there, thereof, and all they that dwell in it. Everything belongs to Yah. So in all the places he rules, or his rule is, that these, this Torah is too. And these benefits are able to be accessed by those who fear him, who do his word, who hear his word. All right? Bless Yahweh, O oh my being. And we should bless Yahweh at all times. And His praises should be continuously in our mouth. Why? Because they're His praises. He placed His praises in our mouth that we might have relationship with Him. It's just like this. I am the king of the universe. And I like barbecue beef ribs. And I make my creation, and I get them pork chops to give to me. Mm. Does that sound right? Would that sound like something I would like? I don't think so. Because mm. I said I like beef barbecue ribs. Okay? So I'm going to place beef barbecue ribs within their access. So that they are able to, to make beef barbecue ribs just the way I like them. Yeah. With some macaroni and cheese, some candy yams, and some collard greens. Hallelujah. And some butter biscuits. Yeah. Alright? I'm going to give them what I like. It don't make sense for me to give them something I don't like. It, do, it doesn't even make sense to begin to attempt to... To, 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 to try to get them something. Why would I get them something I don't like to give back to me? That don't even make no sense. So y'all people, y'all really need to wake up. Hallelujah. Around here trying to get, get something that y'all does not like. Y'all wants, y'all wants what he wants. He placed his praise in our mouth. Hallelujah. Um, and that's what he wants. He wants his praise. He don't want nothing else. He ain't trying to ask for nothing else. Nope. So David tells us, bless Yah. Oh my being, bless him. That's what we ought to do. Bless Yah. Because Yah has been good to us. Yah has given us benefits. Yah has done things for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Hallelujah. Yah forgives our crookedness. Yah heals us of all of our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with kindness. He satisfies your desires with tough. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. Yah is doing righteousness. And right ruling for all the oppressed. God has made a way, has known his ways to Moshe, his acts to the children of Israel. And Yah's compassion and showing favor, patient, and great and kindness. Yah has done some things for us. The least we can do is bless Yah for the things that he has done. In fact, I remember there was a saying that, that I, was, I was taught when I was a child. Says it's, it's a sad frog who don't praise his own pine. Mm -hmm. It's a sad frog or a sad Hebrew who don't praise his own creator. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But as we head to these days towards Yom Kippur, know one thing for certain, two things for sure. It's going to be a time of judgment, and all of us are going to stand before the judgment. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Any questions? Any questions online? Hallelujah. On the conference call. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. We're going to take our break. We'll be back at 11.15. The Heavenly Father, we honor you. We block you. We to you. Thank you for this word. We just pray that you would just continue to have your way in us and through us. Thank you for all that we've heard this morning. And I pray that you would just help us to apply it to our life. That we would bless you. That we would be all that you would have us to be. Sing your marvelous and master's name we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.